Today we're gonna to start building a custom water-cooled PC for a very special client who goes by the name of Shubham Gao. Shubham, also known by his nickname Shuby, is one of the main cast members in the hit Netflix reality TV show, The Circle. A show that Wifey Sauce and I were oddly addicted to at some point. We ended up binging the entire season one in a matter of days. Reality TV isn't really our thing, but for some reason this show was just so engaging and unique to us that we, uh, we really found it enjoyable. Shuby immediately became one of our favorite characters on the show due to his genuine and down-to-earth spirit. So in one of the episodes when I heard him say he had a background in virtual reality and was working as a VR manager, I quickly contacted him on social media and asked if he would be interested in me building a custom rig for him for his VR needs. Obviously he was open to the idea, but did tell me that VR had since taken a back seat for him since the show was filmed, but that he was still very interested to get his foot in the door to PC gaming as well as live streaming so that he can connect with his new fan base. As far as I know, Shuby has never owned a super high-end gaming PC before, so I'm really excited to see his reaction to this system when it's all said and done and to give him the opportunity opportunity to connect with his viewers in a new way, as well as enjoying the joy and glory of PC gaming that we're all so intimately familiar with. So right now we're going to hop on a video call with Shuby and just pick his brain about a few things. Find out if there are any specific needs or preferences that he has so we can help build him the best system possible. Before that, this video is brought to you by the ASRock Z490 PG Velocita. Supporting 10th gen and future generation Intel Core processors, this attractive ATX motherboard features a 13-phase power design with dual 8-pin connectors and active cooling for enhanced overclocking. Enjoy ample connectivity for the latest storage devices, a robust I.O. featuring Intel 2.5 gigabit LAN, customizable RGB lighting, and more. To learn more about the ASRock Z490 PG Velocita, click on the link below. Shuby, my man, how's it going, dude? Thanks for being here. Yeah, of course, brother. How are you, man? I'm I'm awesome, man. I'm just super excited to get this project uh, underway for you, man. It's uh, it's going to be pretty sweet. I wanted to ask you first and foremost. Sure. Amidst this whole pandemic thing, are you okay? Are you healthy and sane? <laughs> yeah, man. No, I really appreciate you asking me. No, I'm good. Spirits are good. Just with the family, rest and working. That's that's good to hear. For killing time during the quarantine, have you yeah. been gaming at all? I have, man. I've been playing For Honor and Fortnite. A little bit of Overwatch. I meant to start the new Call of Duty Warzone, though, by the way. I've heard great stuff about that. Dude, okay. So I'm not a huge, like, Battle Royale person, but I really think it's, like, my favorite Battle Royale so far. Oh, wow. And I even got uh, Wifey Sauce to play it with me. And she's, like, she's not really a, a huge gamer by any yeah. stretch. And she it's it's growing on her. It's actually growing on her, which, which I'm really surprised by. So, dude, we should squat up at some point. For That'd sure, man. If cool. I get, like, I'm so down once this, like, yeah. We'll then, then we can suck together. I'm really bad. I, you might be good, but I, I'm, I'm terrible. You'll have to carry me. So, like, we'll kill it. We'll kill it. Okay, sweet. Um, but uh, I'm guessing that you're playing on a, a console right now? Yeah, yeah. So I've been playing on my PS4. Um, I've actually cool. been a console gamer my whole life, pretty much. You know, PS2, PS3, 360. I put so many hours on my 360. Um, you know, I had the Game Boy also in those mobile consoles, but yeah, for the most part, it's been, yeah. Awesome, man. Well, hopefully we'll be able to get you uh, added on to a new platform, which is, of yeah. course, the PC. That'll be pretty sweet. And um, you said that uh, apart from gaming, you also were interested in, in streaming with the new desktop. Yes. Um, could you tell me a little bit more about that, like what your goals are with streaming, what kind of content you plan to make, and, and that sort of thing? Yeah, man. I mean, I've always loved watching streamers play video games and gaming is a huge part of like, you know, me. I just love gaming. So I don't know if I'd be able to, but I would just love to connect with the audience through that multitude. I don't know what specifically I would do with streaming, but, you know, first and foremost, the gaming would be really fun. Streaming and talking to people would be great. So, yeah, I think it'd just be a great avenue to explore. Absolutely, man. I mean, you obviously have like a pretty beefy following ever since the show. Like you've got a fan base going, so it would be a, a totally cool new way to connect with your audience too, I'm sure, whether it be with games or, or other things. So we'll definitely get you set up with that, man. Uh, I hear you loud and clear. Um, also, uh, I believe I sent you a couple slides that you can maybe look through with me right now. Yes. Um, if we start on the first one, and we're just gonna sort of talk about the PC itself at this point. Yeah. And just sort of narrow down exactly what you're looking for, so we don't build you a system that you that you absolutely yeah. hate by the end of all this. <laughs> um, we'll sort of sculpt it down here. So starting with sure. uh, just the basics, um, size. When it comes to size, what kind of size do you see your system having? Because there's obviously a full range here, 
And yeah. uh, you can tell from the slide, it can go all the way from smaller to large. And just sort of the pros and cons of each on, on each spectrum is that with a smaller system, obviously it's a bit more portable and compact. So if you're on the go, that could be really helpful. Um, but then as you go larger, you also have a bit more compatibility uh, and maybe a bit more expansion down the line. So what, what kind of way are you leaning right now, you think? First, I just love the banana on top of these three. Very yeah, good. Thank you for <laughs> noticing. Thank you for noticing my hard work in these uh, beautifully crafted slides. I love the very nice motif. But yeah, you know what, man? I think I do definitely see the drawback between power and size and then also compatibility. I think for me, I'm definitely going to love the mobile. Kind of the smaller one I'm gearing towards because then, you know, I can take it on the go and it's less restricted in the location and I can bring it with me. Yeah, I think for this, I'm leaning towards the smaller one. Absolutely, man. And there's a lot of like mini ITX cases out there now that, that have really good hardware support, water cooling support and things like that. Um, so we can still probably get you the best of both worlds while, while making it pretty compact. Yeah, that'd be awesome, man. On the second slide, um, we've got style to talk about. So yeah. just briefly looking at these four options, when it comes to your sort of own cosmetic tastes and preferences, yeah. uh, do any of these kind of stand out to you? And what are your thoughts on them in general? Sure, sure. Well, I mean, my first instinct is number four kind of looks like a, a refrigerator, like a small refrigerator. <laughs> Many love... computer cases have been compared to like kitchen appliances in the past. So you're like dead on right there. Oh, hell yeah, man. I feel like a Jeopardy dude. I got the right answer. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, I'm definitely getting kitchen vibes there. I like the design, but I don't think I'm leaning towards a, the refrigerator. Number two is cool. It has like an antique look, but it still kind of reminds me of one of those old AC units. Uh, right. One is really cool. It's kind of intimidating a bit, though, because it looks like one of those big skyscrapers in like a dystopian universe. <laughs> I'll never look at that case the same now that you've said that. Thank you. You know what, man? My heart and gut is saying number three. I love it's just so sleek. It's so clean. It just looks so nice. It's like, yeah, I love three. For sure. Awesome, dude. Awesome. And threes, I mean, they're all very popular cases for good reason. It's got a really smart interior layout. The build quality is great. Um, the one thing I will say is that this particular case, which is the Fractal Design Nano S, uh, does have an acrylic side panel window where all the other ones have tempered glass. That's because it's a slightly older case, but it still holds its own very much so, you know, in 2020. Um, but I think we can maybe work with that. I know some modder friends uh, who can maybe carve out like a custom glass panel for this thing how's that uh, sound that hey that sounds so amazing thank you man awesome i'll definitely look into that for you and then moving on to the third slide here um this is just a picture of actually one of my personal pcs this is hotline 2.0 um, that I built about a year or so ago. And uh, the reason why I'm showing it to you is because I just sort of want to get your, uh, I want to pick your brain on custom water cooling loops. And this yeah. is a custom water cooled system. All of the tubing has been uh, custom bent by, by yours truly. Uh, so it's, it's amazing, it looks as good as it does. Um, but I kind of wanted to just ask if this is something that you're all in or all out with because custom water cooled PCs are very nice looking. I mean, they look super badass and they're they're just that, they're custom. You can make them look extremely unique. They're one of a kind uh, and they actually improve performance. They can improve performance quite a bit. Um, the one downside, the main downside is that they're high maintenance. Uh, you have to be on the lookout for leaks. There's there's always the risk or chance of leaks, but you know if, if you do the proper maintenance and you clean out your loop regularly, uh, it, it can serve you well for for many years. And of yeah. course, you know I'm I'm always on on call if uh, if you need help with that. Uh, so thanks. I just want to get your two cents on this. Are you all in or all out with a custom loop? Um, you know what, man? These loops have always been so fascinated and intrigued by. Yeah, man. I think for me, definitely, I would love to explore it because I never know what I don't have till I have it. Yeah, man. I'm all. I'm all in, 100%. Water. Awesome, dude. Awesome. I I would have been totally fine had you gone the other way as well, but I'm super excited that you're all in because these are really fun for me to build. I mean, uh, I, I can get really creative with them. And like I said, it just turns out a, a more unique product for you at the end of the day. So, so. awesome. Man. And then uh, moving on to the next one. This is also another yay or nay question. Mm -hmm. RGB. Yeah, man. I Possibilities is my favorite word. You know what I mean? I Definitely. think it's very cool. I think the whole customizability, like just having the option to just do follow a pattern, follow a song, create like a vibe with it is very sick. I used to have these speakers, like water speakers, and it would be <laughs> I RGB. know exactly the ones you're talking about. Yeah. I had them in my dorm. They were so cheap, but like I felt like the coolest kid whenever <laughs> someone came over and saw them and we were like gaming. I was like, oh, man. I felt so badass. Those speakers are like the perfect dorm accessory. 
that those, those are made for a college dorm dorm. light that's what they should <laughs> yeah, be called they really should. Uh, but yeah man i love it i think it's, it's such a cool function and if we're going water loops we should just do this it's like we got to do it you know what i mean exactly you do one you do the other go big or go home all right and then the last question here are there any uh any colors that you'd want included in this build if you have any favorite colors what sort of color, color palette you're thinking well man i just wanted to compliment you because you're wearing my favorite color blue I, oh beautiful uh, that, that's yeah. actually coincidence i didn't intend for that uh, no i'm a huge i love blue so much so cool. blue is definitely a color i would love if we could put that in yeah and then i also i don't know i've lately i've just been finding such a fascination with red again and i think the contrast adding a red to it would just give that added flair but yeah blue for me man is that's the vibe for sure. Would you be open to that if like the actual coolant in the system was blue? Like it had like a blue color flowing through the whole thing, through through all the tubes and, and the, the water blocks and stuff. Does that sound- Brother, you blew my mind. I'm so stoked for that. Okay, for cool. Sure. Dude, that, that gives me a great idea of which direction to take this build in so far. And I'm, I'm super excited to see how this thing turns out and, and to really get started on it right now. So that's gonna do it though. I, I, I appreciate your time, dude. Uh, I couldn't be more thrilled to, to be doing this with you. And uh, thank you so much for, for everything. Yeah, thank you, man, so much for reaching out. This is so sick. And I'm like, I'm such a fan of the work you do here. So this is amazing. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, dude, have a good one. Stay safe out there. And uh, I'll be talking to you soon. Hell yeah, man. Woo! So after talking to Shuby, I've spent the last few weeks locking down hardware for the build and I pretty much have all the parts ready to go. Let's go ahead and discuss all the core components first and I'm actually gonna cover each of the individual custom water cooling parts as we go about the build so it's not all, all at once, uh, that might take a while. Let's go ahead and start off with the CPU which is of course the AMD Ryzen 9 3900X 12 core 24 thread CPU. This is an all around fantastic chip for gaming, streaming, video editing, pretty much anything Shuby's interested in doing, this thing's gonna be able to handle it with flying colors, and I'm really excited to be using it in today's build. In no particular order here, our power supply is the Fractal Design Ion SFX 650G. This is an SFX L unit, so it is small form factor. Even though our case can support full-size units, I wanted to go SFX just to give us a little bit more space to work with because things are gonna look pretty cramped when we're all done here. But this is a very nice unit. It's 80 plus gold certified and fully modular, has a very quiet fan inside as well. For storage, we've got a two terabyte MP600 NVMe SSD from Corsair. It is PCIe Gen 4, which is fully supported by our X570 motherboard, the ASUS ROG Crosshair 8 Impact. This is one of the most legendary mini ITX motherboards that's ever hit the market. It does ship in the mini DTX form factor, which is an elongated version of mini ITX, so it can house more components. And man, does this thing take advantage of that. It's loaded with features. The rear IO is absolutely insane. There's a debug LED. I really like the SODIM.2 module that lets you access your drives easily, which is gonna be super clutch in a build like this. And the VRM in this board is just ludicrous. I mean, it's got active cooling, tons of phases, and it's gonna be plenty of stable, reliable power for our 3900X. For memory, we have 32 gigs of G-Skill Trident Z Neo DDR4 3600CL16. I wanted to up the mainstream 16 gigabyte capacity so that Shuby has a bit of overhead to work with. Very nice kit. This is the Zotac GTX 1080 Ti Arctic Storm Mini, and there's actually quite a bit of rationale as to why I picked this card over something like a more modern RTX 20 series uh, Turing-based GPU. The reason being is that this is the fastest graphics card that'll fit in this system that can be custom water cooled. Zotac does make an RTX 2070 Super Mini that would fit in this system, but there's currently no supported GPU water blocks for that card. So far, I've only been able to find custom water blocks for their RTX 2070 non-Super Mini, which is quite a bit slower than a GTX 1080 Ti. So in the end, I chose raw performance and frame rates over things like real-time ray tracing and other RTX technologies. Briefly looking at the fans we'll be using for the build, we've got two Fractal Venturi HP-12s. These are gonna be our front radiator fans. They won't be seen very much, but but they do have high static pressure, so they'll do a great job of dissipating heat. We also have a three pack of Corsair's LL120 series RGB fans. These are gonna be our bling fans that will be more visible in the build. Two of these fans will be on the top radiator and the third fan will be at the rear, assuming there's room. And that brings us to our case, which is the Fractal Design Define Nano S. You guys probably could have assumed that this was gonna be a compact build due to our motherboard and based on what Shuby was saying about wanting to take his system on the go periodically. So I think this is a great choice. It's, it's got a small footprint, it's compact, it's easy 
easy to lug around, but it also has a lot of great custom water cooling support. It'll accommodate our mini DTX motherboard just fine as well. It does have an acrylic side panel window, which scratches easily and it's not the best. It's a bit dated for a case these days, which is why I've partnered up with the very talented Lee of PC Junkie Mods. He's currently working on a custom glass panel for this build as we speak, and he does some amazing work. If you want to check out some of his stuff, I'll put a link down below. But this way, Shuby will have two panels available to him. He can use the acrylic one when he's traveling, if he's worried about glass shattering and things like that, or he can use the custom mod panel when he wants the system to look its absolute best. And the last item we'll talk about before we start putting things together are these beautiful full-length sleeved cables from Ensourced. Joey from Ensourced does a fantastic job. I've been using him for years. He does a perfect job every time. Look at how awesome these look. I'm gonna take it out of the bag really quick. Absolutely beautiful black and blue asymmetric design, blue being Shuby's favorite color, of course. I think he's really gonna love these. So guys, check out Ensourced down in the description below. Joey will take care of you for all of your cable sleeving needs. But those are the core components that we're using. Again, like I said, I'm gonna be going over all the custom water cooling hardware as we go about the build, but I am super excited to finally get this build underway. Our motherboard assembly is coming along pretty nicely here. It's already looking super beefy, but now we can start talking about some of the custom water cooling hardware we'll be using, starting with the EK Quantum Velocity. I have not used this block before, but I have used plenty of EK water block products in the past. Like everything else EK makes, this one has a very high build quality and it looks great. As you can see, I got the nickel and plexi model so we can actually see the coolant through the block, which is always fun. Should do an awesome job, very excited about that. We also have some radiators from Bits Power. These are their Slim Touch Aqua Rads and these are 240 millimeter radiators, about 20, I want to say 27 or 28 millimeters thick, just slightly thicker than your average case fan. But we've got two of these, exact same rads. One will go at the top of the case, the other will go at the front. It's my first time working with these radiators and so far I'm very impressed. Looks like a pretty nice fin density. I love the matte black finish and it uh, just seems like a very sturdily built radiator. These have already been flushed and cleaned out so they're pretty much ready for building and that moves us on to our pump res combo. This is from Singularity Computers. This is their protium pump res combo. So we actually have a reservoir up top and the D5 PWM pump below. It's my first time working with a Singularity product as well. And I gotta tell you, this thing reeks quality. It's so incredibly well built. It's also got these mounting brackets that we'll use to mount this thing to a radiator, probably the front one, I would imagine, something like that. Uh, what I love about this design at the top of the res is that the cap is two parts and they're decoupled. So if you unscrew this part, you can actually rotate this guy so you can face the ports any way you want. That is tremendously helpful and such a smart design. The D5 pump attachment looks very nice as well. I absolutely love the finish on this cover. Uh, just the attention to details are top notch. Everything about this is super nice. And we've got some black sleeved cables that terminate to a four pin PWM connector and Molex for power. There's still a lot of other water cooling parts we have left to discuss, but for now we can get cracking on installing the water block, our CPU block onto the motherboard, which would be pretty straightforward, mounting our radiators and then mounting this guy, which this is this is our first encounter with potential clearance issues. Okay, so he, here's, here's what's going on. So my vision for this build was to have a radiator, like I said, at the front, and I'm not confident that these radiator fans are going to be able to stay on the inside of the case. You might have to mount them to the outside just underneath the front panel, which obviously would restrict airflow quite a bit. So I'm obviously not leaning towards that. Maybe I'll swap them out for slim fans instead. So if we put them on this side of the case, they'll at least be able to breathe a lot better, but we'll have to wait and see how that shakes out. The reason why the fans might not work right here is because we might have clearance issues once this is installed with our graphics card. So assuming that it's going to be sort of configured like that, we've got the graphics card here, which now looks like it's it's just not gonna work. It's not gonna, it's gonna be really, really tight. I mean, it could work, but it also won't look that great if it's brushing right up against the tube there. So that's why I might have to end up using slim fans for this radiator instead. We'll just have to see how it goes. Apart from horizontal clearance, I'm also concerned with the vertical clearance of this pump res because once we have the top radiator installed, you can see here, there just won't be enough room for a fan on that part of the rad. We can definitely fit a fan over here, no problem, but it's a no-go right here, unless we swap that tube out for a much shorter one. 
which I don't think will look nearly as good. At that point, you're gonna be seeing more pump and cap than you will actual reservoir. And I know Shuby does like the look of these reservoirs, so I kinda wanna squeeze a bigger one in there if I can. It's just a matter of, am I willing to forgo one radiator fan to get it done? Let's just play around with it and see how it goes. Before we start though, I should mention that I won't actually be able to mount this pump res to a radiator right now, at least in this part one video, because the very awesome folks at Singularity, I think they just forgot to include the mounting strips that you can mount to radiators or fans in order to uh, pretty much be flexible in how you uh, mount this pump res. It's got a bunch of threaded holes all up and down the rails, uh, so it allows for flexible mounting, but those were not included in the package. I couldn't find them. They should be here by part two, but for now, we're just gonna have to sort of eyeball this. But that's what we're up against right now, so let's just carry on and see how things shake out. Build's coming along pretty nicely. Everything's looking good so far. Uh, don't mind the leaning tower. It's it's fully supported, perfectly safe. Um, but uh, we are pretty much ready to get our GPU block installed onto this guy, which means we have to remove this one and replace it with this one. This is from Bixki. I've never used their product before, but they seem to get pretty good marks online. Build quality looks solid. This block is actually made specifically for the GTX 1080 Ti Arctic Storm Mini from Zotac. The reason I'm using this block instead of the stock one is because the stock block doesn't actually have ports on the top. Uh, you can see it does have them on the bottom and on the side. You can't really use the side ports in this case though. There's just not enough clearance. It'll, it'll hit the side panel. Whereas this, you've got ports on the top and bottom, so it'll give us a bit more flexibility with our runs. I also think uh, the style looks pretty cool. I like that plate, even though it'll be probably mounted, it'll be mounted like this, upside down. The only thing about this block is that it doesn't come included with a back plate. We might be able to use this one, but uh, this one's this one's a little a little bland. So I thought I'd spice things up for Shuby and actually get a custom made back plate from the folks over at V1 Tech. These guys are awesome. They did the same back plates for Hotline 2.0 and they turned out fantastic. I had them help me out this time around as well. It just says Shuby and there's the uh, Netflix circle logo in the background. It does light up. It's got an LED strip that can be controlled with the remote remote control that's included, or you can even hook it up to the motherboard uh, RGB header. So that's pretty sweet. There is, however, one kind of massive problem here, uh, and this is 100% due to an oversight by yours truly, and that is the SODIM.2 module. Is, uh, is, is, is beautiful, and I love it. It's an amazing piece of engineering, but unfortunately, it covers a very large portion of our nice backplate. So that that doesn't look great. That's not good. And there's no other M.2 slots on this motherboard. The only two slots are on this module. So if you're not using the module, you're pretty much SOL when it comes to NVMe M.2 support on this board. So the other option would be to remove the module and replace the NVMe M.2 drive with a two and a half inch SATA Rev 3 SSD. Yes, it would be slower, but it would still be plenty fast for Shuby's needs. And, and while the MP600 is an amazing drive, you really have to be doing some heavy lifting and specific types of workloads in order to fully realize that five thousand megabytes per second bandwidth so yeah that's the uh that's the second option the third option would be to replace the motherboard entirely with a board that has a more conventional m.2 slot like maybe like it would probably be right here and it would just mount you know kind of flat against the pcb and that could work too that way we get our pci gen 4 speeds and still be able to see the back plate in its entirety the downside there is that it wouldn't be a crosshair 8 impact which is a phenomenal board in many other ways besides the SO DIM.2 feature. Like I said, the power delivery, the VRM on this board is pretty much unmatched in its class. And I don't know how I feel about sacrificing that for faster storage speeds that Shuby may not even be using. So I think he'll be benefiting overall from day-to-day -day use with a, a more robust power delivery and VRM than he will a PCIe Gen 4 NVMe SSD. I think if we put in a two terabyte SATA Rev 3, six gigabit per second drive, the real world benefits of NVMe SSDs would go more or less 
unnoticed to him. With all that said, we're gonna keep the board and we're gonna take out this guy. I don't know exactly what drive I'm gonna use to replace the MP600 yet, but it is gonna be a two terabyte, six gigabit per second SSD. So we can keep 100% of the storage in the system with no moving parts. Once the GPU has been prepped, we'll be ready to start playing around with some fittings. We have all of our fittings provided by Bits Power. They are the one true fitting king in my book. They have extremely high quality products. Uh, all their fittings are super nice and they have that little gold accent on them that, that, that also just looks amazing. Um, but uh, we have pretty much every kind of fitting you can imagine from their lineup here. I should also mention that these are hard tube fittings. So we are gonna be doing hard line tubing in this build, as I'm sure you guys probably expected. We are gonna do a 14, is this 14 millimeter? Yes, I'm not crazy. 14 millimeter outer diameter and the tubes are also provided by Bits Power. Hopefully they gave me enough. If not, I've got some extras lying around, but that's what we're dealing with now. So uh, let's go ahead and get this block onto here, get the back plate on, install the GPU and start messing around with these guys. All right, let's hop to it. We, we we have a problem. There's there's something wrong. Um, the block the block doesn't fit. Yeah, it's it's not it doesn't fit. You see how these capacitors are arranged? You've got four here and four here with a gap in the middle. Well, look at the cutout how it's actually machined. You've kind of got enough space for this bank of capacitors, but over here instead of having one large cutout, there's this little piece in the middle that interferes with the caps over there. So it's just it's the wrong block, which is really lame because when I bought this, it said Zotac GTX 1080 Ti Mini, and this is the only Mini 1080 Ti that Zotac makes. So I looked on their website on, on Bixky's website just to see if I could find something. And I found this, I found the water block, Zotac 1080 Ti Mini, full coverage GP water block. And it looks to be the same one, but if you look closely, does it zoom? This doesn't zoom, okay. If you look closely, you can see that the cutout is in fact different for the capacitors. And that looks like it's the right one. That looks appropriate. And if you look at the model name over here, it's NST 1080 Ti Mi V2 X. V2 X, this is almost the same, but it's 4X, so I bought the wrong block. In my defense, the pictures on Amazon for this product are inaccurate. So this is actually the V4, the one that I purchased, right, V4. And if you look at the, uh, the cutout there for the block, that is completely different than that. So even if I had gone to the Bixky website first to confirm which block I needed, I still would have been misled by these false pictures on the Amazon product page. So now this kind of sucks, right? Because I don't have a block that I can work with, which means I need to buy another one. As far as I know, Bixky is the only one that I've been able to find for this particular GPU. I can't change the GPU because it's the only one that fits and, it, and I don't want to compromise too much on speed. But if I buy another block, who's to say that I'm not just going to get another bad block that doesn't fit? Not to mention the shipping times. Look at that. May or June. June? Sure, I could probably pay $80 to $100 to get it by mid-May, but come on. At the same time, what choice do I have? I, I kind of have to pull the trigger on another one of these things and, and just roll the dice again. It's it's kind of stupid at this point, and it's just delaying the build further and further, which is really annoying, but uh, these things happen. It's been a while since I've had a build project give me this many problems right out of the gate. I guess I was due for one, right? I mean, at this point, my hands are tied, guys. I can't really progress any further until more parts come in. So I'm gonna call it here. This is part one. This is part one of the Shuby build. Uh, Shuby, by the way, if you're watching this, you're awesome. Don't blame yourself for any of these issues. In fact, most of these problems are my fault, but I am sorry to keep you waiting. I hate to keep pushing this build back, but I promise you it will be worth the wait. Make sure you guys smash that like button if you enjoyed it. Get subscribed for more tech content coming at you really soon, and I will see y'all in the next video.